In the heart of the Fertile Crescent, between the mighty Tigris and Euphrates rivers, the world's first civilization was born around 3500 BCE. This land, known today as Mesopotamia, was home to the innovative Sumerians. They built the world's first cities, including Ur and Uruk, which became hubs of trade, politics and religion. The Sumerians achieved many firsts that would shape human history forever. One of their most enduring inventions was cuneiform, the world's first system of writing, developed around 3200 BCE. Initially used for recording trade and inventories, it evolved to document laws, myths and poetry, forever changing how humans communicate and record history. They were also pioneers in creating the wheel, which revolutionized transport and pottery making, and in implementing the concept of time divided into 60-minute hours and 360-degree circles, principles still used today. Yet beyond their tangible inventions, the Sumerians shaped the spiritual landscape of humanity by constructing massive stepped pyramids called ziggurats, dedicated to their gods. These towering structures served as places of worship and a bustling centers of city life. The story of ancient Egypt begins with the Nile River, a lifeline in the desert that enabled one of history's most enduring civilizations to flourish for over three millennia, starting around 3100 BCE. This civilization's heart beat along the Nile's banks, where seasonal floods deposited rich silt, fostering agriculture and supporting a growing population. Egypt's first pharaoh, Nama, unified Upper and Lower Egypt around 3100 BCE, establishing a dynasty that would rule for centuries. The pharaohs were seen as gods on earth, intermediaries between the divine and the people, tasked with maintaining order and harmony. Among their most astonishing achievements are the pyramids, with the Great Pyramid of Giza, built around 2580-2560 BCE for Pharaoh Khufu, standing as a proof of their architectural prowess and engineering ingenuity. These tombs were designed to ensure the pharaoh's immortality, leading them through the afterlife with all the wealth and status they enjoyed in life. Ancient Egyptians also developed a sophisticated writing system, hieroglyphs, which adorned temple walls and tombs, telling tales of gods, pharaohs, and the people's daily lives. This writing, combined with their advancements in mathematics, medicine, and astronomy, laid the groundwork for future civilizations to build upon. Yet, it was their deep spiritual life that truly defined ancient Egypt. Believing in an afterlife, they mummified their dead and filled their tombs with treasures, texts, and provisions for the journey beyond. In the wake of the Dark Ages following the collapse of the Mycenaean civilization, a new era dawned around 800 BCE in the rugged landscapes of Greece. Here, the concept of the city-state, or polis, emerged as a central aspect of Greek life. Each city-state was a sovereign entity with its own government, laws and customs, yet they shared a common language and gods. Among these, Athens and Sparta stood out, each epitomizing different facets of Greek civilization. Athens became the cradle of democracy around the 5th century BCE, under the reforms of Cleisthenes. He introduced a system where citizens could participate directly in decision-making, laying the foundations for democratic governance that influences societies to this day. The cultural achievements of ancient Greece are unparalleled. The Greeks excelled in the arts, philosophy and sciences. Figures like Socrates, Plato and Aristotle explored questions of ethics, reality and politics, influencing Western thought for centuries. In the realm of the arts, the Greeks pursued ideals of beauty and harmony, evident in their sculpture, architecture and theatre. The Olympic Games, first recorded in 776 BCE, celebrated physical prowess and the honor of the gods, fostering a spirit of competition and unity among the Greek city-states. In the early 5th century BCE, the mighty Persian Empire sought to expand its dominion westward, setting its sights on the fractious city-states of Greece. This clash of civilizations would be remembered as the Persian Wars, a series of conflicts that unfolded between 490 and 479 BCE, highlighting the fierce struggle for freedom and the remarkable unity of the Greek polis in the face of overwhelming odds. The conflict began with the Battle of Marathon in 490 BCE, where the Athenians, vastly outnumbered, managed to repel the first Persian invasion. The heroic messenger Pheidippides ran from Marathon to Athens to announce the victory, 
a feat commemorated in the modern marathon race. However, the threat persisted, and the Persians returned in 480 BCE with a larger force under King Xerxes. The legendary Battle of Thermopylae saw 300 Spartans, led by King Leonidas, make a valiant last stand against the Persian army, buying time for the rest of Greece to prepare. Though the Spartans were ultimately overcome, their sacrifice became a symbol of courage and duty. The turning point came at the naval battle of Salamis, where the Athenian general Themistocles lured the Persian fleet into the narrow straits and achieved a decisive victory. The following year, the Greek forces won the final battle at Plataea, effectively ending the Persian invasion and securing Greek independence. The Persian Wars united the Greek city-states as never before, demonstrating the power of collective action and strategic ingenuity. These victories preserved the fledgling concepts of democracy and freedom in Greece, allowing its culture and political ideas to flourish and continue to influence Western civilization. The unity forged during the Persian Wars was short-lived, giving way to internal strife that culminated in the Peloponnesian War from 431 to 404 BCE. This conflict pitted Athens and its allies against Sparta and the Peloponnesian League, a struggle for dominance that would lead to the downfall of the Golden Age of Greece. The war began with ideological and economic tensions between the democratic but imperialistic Athens and the oligarchic, militaristic Sparta. The conflict was marked by a series of battles, sieges and a devastating plague that killed a significant portion of the Athenian population, including its leader Pericles. The turning point of the war came with the Athenian disaster in Sicily, where a massive expeditionary force was completely destroyed. Sparta, seizing the opportunity and with financial support from Persia, built a fleet to challenge Athenian dominance at sea, leading to Athens' eventual surrender in 404 BCE. The Peloponnesian War had far-reaching consequences for the Greek world. It weakened the major city-states, diminished their economic strength, and led to a loss of life that significantly reduced Greece's ability to resist future invaders. The conflict revealed the dangers of hubris, the vulnerability of democracies to demagoguery, and the fragile nature of alliances. In the aftermath, the stage was set for the rise of Macedon under Philip II and his son Alexander the Great, who would leverage the divisions within Greece to consolidate power and embark on a campaign of conquest. The Peloponnesian War stands as a poignant reminder of the consequences of internal division and the cyclical nature of history, where unity is often followed by discord. From the modest beginnings of a small settlement on the Tiber River in the 8th century BCE, Rome grew to dominate the Mediterranean world. The transformation of Rome from a republic, founded in 509 BCE, where power was vested in the hands of the Senate and various elected officials, to an empire under Augustus in 27 BCE, marks one of history's most significant political evolutions. The Roman Republic was characterized by its innovative governance structures, including a complex legal system and division of powers, which allowed it to manage the affairs of a diverse and expanding territory. This period saw Rome's legions marching far and wide, from the sands of Egypt to the forests of Germany, bringing vast territories under Roman control through a mix of military might and strategic alliances. The transition to empire under Augustus brought about a period of unprecedented peace and stability known as the Pax Romana, lasting over two centuries. This era allowed for cultural and architectural flourishing, with Rome at the center of the world stage. The Romans were master builders, leaving behind a legacy of engineering marvels, such as roads that connected the empire, aqueducts that supplied cities with water, and monumental buildings like the Colosseum, where citizens reveled in public spectacles. Culturally, Rome was a melting pot, absorbing and adapting the best of Greek art, philosophy, and religion, creating a vibrant synthesis that would define Western culture. Latin, the language of Rome, became the lingua franca of the Western world, a sign of Rome's enduring influence on language, law, and governance. Yet, the very factors that contributed to Rome's greatness, its vast territories, diverse populations, and military commitments, also sowed the seeds of its decline. Economic troubles, military overreach, and political instability would eventually lead to the empire's slow fragmentation and fall in the West by the 5th century CE. As the Western Roman Empire crumbled in the 5th century CE, 
a new era dawned, marked by the spread of Christianity and the survival of Roman traditions in the Byzantine Empire. The vacuum left by Rome's fall saw the rise of various kingdoms across Europe, each weaving the fabric of a new society under the spiritual guidance of the Christian Church. Christianity, once persecuted, became the empire's official religion under Emperor Constantine in the 4th century. With Rome's fall, the Church emerged as a unifying force, offering solace and a sense of community amid the uncertainties of the era. Monasteries and churches became centers of learning, preserving classical texts and promoting education, while missionaries ventured far and wide to spread the Christian faith. To the east, the Byzantine Empire, with its capital at Constantinople, carried on the Roman legacy, blending it with Greek and Christian influences. Under Emperor Justinian I in the 6th century, the Byzantines attempted to reclaim lost territories of the Western Empire, briefly restoring the Mediterranean world's unity. The Hagia Sophia, with its revolutionary dome and stunning mosaics, symbolized the empire's spiritual and cultural majesty. The Byzantine Empire served as a cultural and economic bridge between the East and West, preserving classical knowledge and fostering trade until its fall in 1453. It played a crucial role in shaping the Christian world and protecting Europe from Eastern invasions acting as a buffer state. As the remnants of Roman authority disappeared, Europe entered a period characterized by fragmentation and uncertainty. The feudal system emerged as a social and economic structure that defined the Middle Ages, particularly from the 9th to the 15th century. This system was based on a hierarchy of lords and vassals, where land or fief was exchanged for military service and loyalty. At the heart of feudalism was the Lord's Manor, the social and economic hub where knights and serfs played crucial roles. Knights, often vassals to a lord, provided military service, protecting the realm from invasions and maintaining order. In return, they received land and peasants to work it. Serfs, the backbone of the medieval economy, were tied to the land, cultivating crops to sustain the manor while living under the Lord's protection and jurisdiction. Feudalism fostered a sense of mutual obligation and duty. Lords provided protection and justice, vassals offered service and loyalty, and serfs worked the land, all within a self-sufficient manorial system. Markets and fairs within the manor became vital for trade, breaking the isolation of these rural communities. Despite its rigid structure, feudalism laid the groundwork for the development of medieval European society, shaping its political, social and economic landscapes. The system's decline began in the late Middle Ages, as centralizing monarchies, the growth of towns and trade, and the Black Death undermined the feudal order, paving the way for the modern age. In 1095, Pope Urban II issued a call that would echo through history, igniting the flames of the Crusades, a series of religious wars waged over two centuries with the proclaimed aim of reclaiming Jerusalem and the Holy Land from Muslim control. This call to arms, promising absolution and eternal salvation for those who took up the cross, mobilized thousands from across Europe. The First Crusade, 1096-1099, saw an unprecedented gathering of European knights and nobles embark on a perilous journey, culminating in the capture of Jerusalem in 1099. This initial success established a series of crusader states, fragile Christian kingdoms in a sea of Muslim territories, setting the stage for subsequent conflicts. The Crusades were marked by moments of both brutality and cooperation, as they brought together people from vastly different cultures in warfare, trade, and occasionally, in uneasy peace. The exchange of ideas, technologies and goods, such as the introduction of Arabic numerals to Europe, was one of the unintended consequences of this prolonged contact. However, the impact of the Crusades was profound and far-reaching, shaping the medieval world and its legacy. They deepened the schism between Christianity and Islam, fostered a culture of knightly chivalry, and led to significant social and economic changes within Europe itself. The mobilization for the Crusades stimulated trade, weakened the feudal nobility, and contributed to the rise of powerful monarchies. Despite their initial religious motivations, the Crusades ultimately failed to secure a lasting Christian presence in the Holy Land. Yet they left an indelible mark on the collective memory of both East and West, symbolizing the clash and coexistence of faiths and cultures that would resonate through the ages.
In the mid-14th century, Europe faced an unprecedented catastrophe that would forever alter its course, the Black Death. Arriving on the continent in 1347, this bubonic plague pandemic claimed an estimated one-third to one-half of Europe's population within just a few years. Originating in Asia, the disease spread along trade routes, reaching the heart of Europe with devastating speed and impact. The Black Death was indiscriminate in its victims, striking down the young and the old, the rich and the poor. Traditional societal structures were overwhelmed, villages were abandoned, fields lay fallow and economies were shattered. The sheer scale of the pandemic led to a profound crisis of faith as people struggled to reconcile their suffering with their beliefs. Yet from this devastation emerged profound social and economic changes. The massive loss of life resulted in a labor shortage, shifting the balance of power from landowners to the surviving workers who could now demand better wages and conditions. This shift contributed to the decline of the feudal system and the rise of a more mobile and dynamic society. The Black Death also spurred advancements in medicine and public health as societies sought to understand and combat the spread of disease. It challenged the authority of the church as people sought new explanations and solutions for their suffering, paving the way for the questioning of traditional authority that would characterize the Renaissance and Reformation. The aftermath of the Black Death is a sign of resilience of humanity. Societies rebuilt, populations recovered, and Europe entered a period of significant social, economic, and cultural transformation. The pandemic reshaped the medieval world, setting the stage for the modern era. The Renaissance, a period of profound cultural and intellectual rebirth, began in the 14th century in Italy and spread across Europe over the next centuries. This era was marked by a resurgence of interest in the classical knowledge and values of ancient Greece and Rome, leading to revolutionary developments in art, science and thought. At the heart of the Renaissance was humanism, a philosophy that placed a greater emphasis on the value and potential of human beings, rather than the divine or supernatural. Scholars like Petrarch sought out and studied ancient texts, breathing life into the classics and inspiring a new generation of thinkers. Artists such as Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo pushed the boundaries of creativity, mastering the art of realistic portrayal and depth, imbuing their subjects with emotion and vitality. Their works not only captured the beauty of the human form, but also the spirit of inquiry and exploration that defined the era. The Renaissance also witnessed significant advancements in science and technology. Figures like Galileo challenged long-held beliefs about the universe, while inventors like Leonardo experimented with designs for flying machines and submarines. The printing press, invented by Johannes Gutenberg in the mid-15th century, revolutionized the spread of knowledge, making books more accessible and encouraging the spread of literacy and new ideas. This era of rebirth was not confined to the intellectual and cultural spheres. It also reflected a growing spirit of exploration and adventure. As Renaissance ideas spread, they laid the groundwork for the age of exploration, igniting a curiosity about the world beyond Europe. The Italian Renaissance set the stage for the modern world, championing the power of human reason, the importance of individual achievement, and the potential for progress. It was a time when humanity seemed limitless and the world was ripe for discovery. As the Renaissance spirit transcended the Alps, it found fertile ground in the cities and courts of Northern Europe, blossoming into what is now known as the Northern Renaissance by the late 15th and early 16th centuries. This cultural movement, while drawing inspiration from Italy, developed its own distinct characteristics, deeply influenced by the social, political and religious context of the region. One of the central figures of the Northern Renaissance was Erasmus of Rotterdam, a Dutch philosopher and humanist who advocated for education and scholarly pursuits. His call for reform and emphasis on critical thinking and the study of the Bible in its original languages resonated across Europe, influencing the Reformation. Art in the North took a different direction from its Italian counterparts, focusing more on realism and the details of everyday life. Artists like Albrecht Dürer in Germany combined Italian techniques with northern traditions, producing works of intricate detail and emotional depth. Meanwhile, in the Netherlands, painters like Jan van Eyck and Peter Bruegel the Elder captured the textures, landscapes and customs of their world with unprecedented realism. 
The invention and spread of the printing press played a pivotal role in disseminating Renaissance ideas. It enabled the rapid production of books and the widespread availability of knowledge, breaking down the barriers of literacy and education. This period saw an explosion in the publication of literature, scientific works, and the Bible in vernacular languages, making ideas accessible to a broader audience than ever before. The Northern Renaissance was also a time of profound religious reflection and debate, setting the stage for the Protestant Reformation. The questioning of authority and a return to original sources led to calls for reform within the church, forever altering the religious landscape of Europe. This era of intellectual and artistic flourishing in Northern Europe contributed to the development of a more modern worldview, emphasizing observation, individuality, and a critical questioning of accepted truths. The age of exploration, spanning the 15th to the 17th centuries, marked an era when Europe extended its reach far beyond its borders, driven by a desire for new trade routes, wealth, and the spread of Christianity. This period of unprecedented global exploration reshaped the world, forging connections and confrontations between distant cultures. It began with the Portuguese, who, under the guidance of Prince Henry the Navigator, pioneered the exploration of the West African coast in the early 15th century. Their quest for gold, spices, and an elusive sea route to India led to the discovery of the Cape of Good Hope by Bartolomeo Diaz in 1488 and Vasco da Gama's voyage to India in 1498. Spain soon joined the quest, with Christopher Columbus's landmark voyage in 1492, seeking a westward route to Asia, but instead encountering the Americas. This discovery opened the floodgates for European powers to explore, conquer, and colonize vast territories in the New World. The Treaty of Tordesillas in 1494 divided the newly discovered lands outside Europe between Portugal and Spain, setting the stage for centuries of colonial rivalry. The age of exploration was about the discovery of new lands and the exchange of goods, ideas, and cultures. It brought about the Columbian Exchange, where products like potatoes, tomatoes, and tobacco were introduced to Europe, while the Americas received wheat, horses, and diseases, which had devastating impacts on indigenous populations. However, this era also witnessed the darker side of exploration, with the beginning of the transatlantic slave trade and the exploitation of indigenous peoples. The quest for wealth and territory often led to violence, subjugation, and the imposition of foreign rule, altering the destinies of entire civilizations. The age of exploration expanded the boundaries of the known world, transforming global trade, ecology, and culture. It marked the beginning of a new era of interconnectedness, setting the foundation for the modern globalized world. In 1517, a German monk and university professor named Martin Luther ignited a firestorm that would forever change the landscape of Christianity. Disturbed by the corruption he saw within the church, particularly the sale of indulgences, Luther penned the 95 Theses, challenging church practices and doctrines. His act of defiance, nailing these theses to the door of the All Saints Church in Wittenberg, became the catalyst for the Protestant Reformation. Luther's call for reform spread like wildfire, aided by the newly invented printing press. His ideas resonated with a wide audience, from peasants to princes, sparking a movement that questioned centuries of Catholic tradition. The core of Luther's message was simple yet revolutionary. Salvation could be achieved through faith alone, not deeds, and the Bible was the sole source of divine knowledge accessible to every believer. The response from the church was swift and severe, leading to Luther's excommunication. However, the movement could not be contained. Luther's ideas gave rise to various Protestant denominations, forever altering the religious map of Europe. The Reformation challenged the authority of the Pope, diminished the power of the Catholic Church, and led to the emergence of national churches. This era of religious upheaval also had profound social and political implications. It encouraged the spread of literacy, as people were urged to read the Bible for themselves. It shifted the balance of power in Europe, as monarchs and princes saw an opportunity to assert their independence from the church and seize church lands and wealth. The posting of the 95 Theses marked the beginning of a religious, cultural and societal transformation, signaling the end of the Middle Ages and the dawn of a new era in European history. In the face of the Protestant Reformation's rapid spread, 
the Catholic Church embarked on a vigorous campaign of internal renewal and counteraction known as the Counter-Reformation or Catholic Reformation. Central to this effort was the Council of Trent, which convened intermittently between 1545 and 1563. Here, church leaders sought to address the abuses and doctrinal issues that had sparked the Protestant revolt, reaffirming core Catholic beliefs and practices such as the authority of the Pope, the importance of both faith and works for salvation, and the veneration of saints and relics. The Council of Trent also initiated comprehensive reforms aimed at clergy education and discipline, seeking to eradicate the corruption and lax standards that had weakened the Church's moral authority. Seminaries were established to properly train priests, emphasizing pastoral care and theological knowledge. A pivotal force in the Counter-Reformation was the Society of Jesus, or the Jesuits, founded by Ignatius of Loyola. The Jesuits became the spearhead of the Church's missionary effort, spreading Catholicism to Asia, Africa and the Americas, and were instrumental in the revitalization of education and scholarship within Europe. Their dedication to education, missionary work, and the defense of Catholic doctrine played a crucial role in renewing the Church's influence. Art and architecture also served as powerful tools in the Counter-Reformation. The Church commissioned works that reflected the themes of sacrifice, devotion, and the supernatural, aiming to evoke emotional responses and reinforce Catholic faith among the masses. This period saw the flourishing of the Baroque style, characterized by its dramatic use of light, color and movement, epitomized in the works of artists like Caravaggio and Bernini. The Counter-Reformation was a defensive reaction to Protestantism and a profound renewal of the Catholic Church that had lasting impacts on its doctrine, practice and global reach. It was a time of resurgence, marked by a deepened spirituality and an assertive reaffirmation of Catholic identity. The landscape of Europe was torn asunder by a series of religious wars, culminating in the devastating Thirty Years' War from 1618 to 1648. Initially sparked by religious conflict between Protestant and Catholic states within the Holy Roman Empire, the war quickly spiraled into a wider European political struggle drawing in major powers like Spain, France, Sweden and Denmark. The conflict was marked by a series of brutal battles, sieges and atrocities that devastated large swathes of Central Europe, with the civilian population bearing the brunt of the suffering. Famine and disease swept through the continent, drastically reducing the population in affected areas. The war was a struggle for religious supremacy and for political dominance, as princes and kings sought to expand their territories and influence. The Peace of Westphalia, signed in 1648, marked the end of the Thirty Years' War, bringing a semblance of stability to Europe. This series of treaties recognized the sovereign rights of states and established the legal framework for modern international relations. It allowed for the coexistence of different religions within the Holy Roman Empire, granting rulers the right to determine their territory's religion and offering protections for minority faiths. The aftermath of the Thirty Years' War reshaped the political and religious landscape of Europe. It led to the decline of the Holy Roman Empire as a political force and the rise of nation-states. The war and its conclusion had lasting implications for the balance of power in Europe, setting the stage for future conflicts. The religious wars of the 16th and 17th centuries highlight the destructive power of ideological division but also the potential for compromise and peace through diplomacy and legal agreements. The era serves as a sign of the complex interplay of faith, power and identity that has shaped the course of European history. In the 18th century, Europe witnessed the emergence of the Enlightenment, a sweeping intellectual movement that championed reason, science and the rights of individuals. Philosophers and thinkers across the continent questioned traditional authority and beliefs advocating for a society based on rationality and empirical evidence. At the heart of the Enlightenment was the belief in the power of human reason to understand and improve the world. Philosophers like Voltaire and Rousseau challenged the divine right of kings and the entrenched privileges of the aristocracy, calling for freedom of speech, equality before the law, and democratic governance. Meanwhile, scientists like Isaac Newton and Galileo Galilei laid the foundations of modern physics and astronomy, showing that the universe operated according to discoverable laws. 
The Enlightenment's ideas were not confined to the intellectual elite, but spread through books, pamphlets and newspapers to influence a wide audience. This era of reason and debate paved the way for significant social and political transformations, including revolutions that would reshape the world. The Enlightenment was a catalyst for change, challenging humanity to envision and strive for a better society based on principles of freedom, equality and justice. The American Revolution, spanning from 1775 to 1783, was not merely a battle for independence from British rule. It was a profound manifestation of the Enlightenment's ideals. Colonists in the New World, inspired by notions of liberty, equality and democracy, challenged the might of the British Empire, setting the stage for a new era in human history. The conflict was ignited by mounting tensions over British taxation and lack of representation, culminating in revolutionary acts such as the Boston Tea Party in 1773. The battles of Lexington and Concord in 1775 marked the beginning of open warfare, rallying colonists to the cause of independence. On July 4, 1776, the Second Continental Congress took a radical step by adopting the Declaration of Independence, penned by Thomas Jefferson. This document articulated the Enlightenment principles that justified the colony's separation from Britain, emphasizing natural rights and the consent of the governed as the basis of legitimate government. The war was marked by significant battles, including Saratoga and Yorktown, and was characterized by the resilience and determination of the colonial forces, despite facing a superior enemy. The intervention of France, motivated by its rivalry with Britain and inspired by the same Enlightenment ideals, proved crucial to the American cause. The signing of the Treaty of Paris in 1783 recognized the independence of the United States, a momentous victory for the principles of the Enlightenment. The American Revolution inspired a wave of democratic ideals and movements across the globe, demonstrating the power of collective action and the pursuit of liberty. The establishment of the United States marked the dawn of a nation founded on Enlightenment principles, setting a precedent for the modern democratic state and the universal rights of man. The French Revolution, beginning in 1789, was a profound and tumultuous upheaval that reshaped France and sent shockwaves through the kingdoms of Europe. Born from the Enlightenment ideals of liberty, equality and fraternity, it sought to overthrow the ancient regime of monarchy, aristocracy and clerical privilege. The revolution was sparked by financial crisis and widespread discontent with the monarchy's inability to manage the state's debts. The summoning of the Estates General in 1789 for the first time in over a century became a pivotal moment, leading to the formation of the National Assembly by representatives of the Third Estate, who declared themselves the true representatives of the French people. The storming of the Bastille on July 14, 1789 became the symbol of the revolution, marking the beginning of the people's revolt against oppression. What followed was a radical transformation of French society, including the abolition of feudalism, the establishment of a republic, and the execution of King Louis XVI. The revolution's initial ideals of democratic reform soon gave way to the reign of terror, a period of extreme violence and political purges led by Robespierre and the Committee of Public Safety. The guillotine became a symbol of this era, claiming thousands of lives in the name of protecting the revolution, Amidst the upheaval, a young military officer named Napoleon Bonaparte rose to prominence, eventually seizing power in a coup d'etat in 1799. Declaring himself emperor in 1804, Napoleon embarked on a series of military campaigns across Europe, spreading the revolutionary ideals of nationalism and legal reform, while also consolidating his own power. The Napoleonic Wars reshaped the map of Europe, leading to the rise and fall of empires. The Congress of Vienna in 1815 sought to restore the old order, but the legacy of the revolution and Napoleon's rule endured, laying the groundwork for modern nation-states and inspiring future generations to fight for freedom and equality. The Industrial Revolution, beginning in the late 18th century in Britain and spreading globally, marked a profound shift in human history, as technological innovations drastically transformed work, society and the environment. At its heart was the steam engine, an invention that powered factories, railways and ships, revolutionizing production and transportation. 
This era saw the rise of mechanized manufacturing, with the textile industry leading the way. Inventions like the spinning jenny and the power loom allowed goods to be produced at an unprecedented scale and speed, lowering costs and making products more accessible to a wider population. The construction of railways and steam-powered ships knit the world closer together, facilitating the movement of goods and people across vast distances. However, the Industrial Revolution also brought profound social and economic changes. The rapid urbanization it spurred led to overcrowded cities, challenging living and working conditions, and significant environmental pollution. The demand for labor in factories contributed to the decline of traditional artisan crafts and the rural way of life, altering the social fabric of nations. The rise of factories and the mechanization of labor created new class dynamics, with a growing divide between the wealthy industrialists and the working class. This period witnessed the birth of capitalism as the dominant economic system, characterized by private ownership of the means of production and the pursuit of profit. The Industrial Revolution laid the groundwork for the modern world, with its technological innovations setting the stage for continual advancements. Yet it also highlighted the challenges of balancing economic growth with social equity and environmental sustainability, issues that continue to resonate today. The Industrial Revolution fueled not only technological advancements, but also a voracious appetite for raw materials and new markets, leading to the age of imperialism. From the late 19th century to the early 20th century, European powers embarked on a frenzied expansion, colonizing vast areas of Africa, Asia and the Pacific, and extending their influence in the Americas. This era was characterized by a belief in European superiority and a civilizing mission, justifying the domination of other peoples and cultures. The scramble for Africa epitomized this imperialist rush, as European nations divided the continent among themselves with little regard for indigenous societies or historical boundaries. Imperialism was driven by economic interests, strategic concerns and national pride. The extraction of resources and the exploitation of labor in colonized territories enriched the imperial powers, fueling their industrial machines and lifestyles of opulence. Infrastructure such as railways and telegraph lines were developed, primarily to facilitate resource extraction and military control rather than benefit the local populations. However, imperialism also led to resistance, uprisings and conflicts, as colonized peoples fought against foreign domination and for their independence. The impact of European imperialism reshaped societies around the world, leaving a complex legacy of economic disparity, cultural change, and political borders that continues to influence global relations today. World War I, known as the Great War, erupted in 1914, drawing nations across the globe into a conflict of unprecedented scale and devastation. Triggered by the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria-Hungary, and fueled by a complex web of alliances, nationalism and imperial ambitions, the war shattered the world order. The Western Front epitomized the brutality of the war, with soldiers enduring the horrors of trench warfare for years. Advances in military technology, including machine guns, tanks and chemical weapons, contributed to the immense casualties, making it one of the deadliest conflicts in history. Major battles like the Somme and Verdun consumed lives in staggering numbers with little territorial gain to show for the bloodshed. The war also saw the collapse of empires, including the Russian, Ottoman, Austro-Hungarian and German empires, reshaping the political landscape of Europe and beyond. The end of the war in 1918, marked by the signing of the Treaty of Versailles, imposed harsh penalties on Germany and redrew the map of Europe. However, the treaty's terms sowed the seeds of future conflicts, leaving a legacy of resentment and economic turmoil. World War I fundamentally altered the course of the 20th century, undermining faith in progress and rationality and leading to significant social, political and technological changes. It was a harbinger of the even more destructive conflict to come, laying the groundwork for World War II. The period between the two world wars was one of stark contrasts and deep turmoil. After the devastation of World War I, Europe sought to rebuild but the scars of conflict and the harsh terms of the Treaty of Versailles left deep wounds. The 1920s brought a brief respite, with economic growth and cultural flourishing, 
but this Roaring Twenties era ended abruptly with the Wall Street crash of 1929, plunging the world into the Great Depression. The economic hardships of the 1930s created fertile ground for extremist ideologies to take root. In Italy, Benito Mussolini established the first fascist regime, promising to restore Italy's greatness through authoritarian rule and aggressive expansion. In Germany, the National Socialist Nazi Party led by Adolf Hitler rose to power on a platform of national revival, anti-Semitism and territorial conquest. Meanwhile, in the Soviet Union, Joseph Stalin solidified his control through brutal purges and forced collectivization resulting in widespread famine and millions of deaths. These totalitarian regimes, characterized by the absolute control of the state over all aspects of life and the suppression of dissent, sought to redraw the world order. Their aggressive policies of expansion and militarization directly contributed to the outbreak of World War II as they invaded neighboring countries, defying international agreements and appeasement efforts. The interwar period was a time of dramatic change as the world struggled to make sense of the Great War's legacy and to cope with economic despair. The failure to secure lasting peace and stability made this era a shadow between two devastating wars, highlighting the challenges of rebuilding and the dangers of unchecked authoritarianism. World War II, from 1939 to 1945, was the deadliest and most widespread conflict in human history, engulfing nations across the globe in a battle between the Axis powers, Germany, Italy, Japan, and the Allies, primarily the Soviet Union, the United Kingdom and the United States. Sparked by the ambitions of totalitarian regimes to expand their empires, the war saw humanity's greatest innovations turn to tools of destruction and devastation. The war introduced new tactics and technologies, including blitzkrieg, aircraft carriers and the first use of nuclear weapons, fundamentally changing the nature of warfare. The Eastern Front became the site of some of the war's most brutal fighting, with millions of soldiers and civilians losing their lives in battles like Stalingrad, marking a turning point in the Allies' favor. However, World War II was a scene of horrific atrocities, most notably the Holocaust, where six million Jews, along with millions of others deemed undesirable by the Nazi regime, were systematically murdered in concentration camps. This genocide remains one of the darkest chapters in human history, the war reached its climax with the D-Day invasion in 1944, leading to the liberation of Europe from Nazi control and culminated in the Pacific with the dropping of atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945, forcing Japan's surrender. The aftermath of World War II reshaped the global order, leading to the establishment of the United Nations with the hope of preventing future conflicts, the beginning of the Cold War and the division of Europe. World War II not only altered the course of history, but also left indelible marks on the collective memory of nations, serving as a somber reminder of the costs of war and the value of peace. Following the devastation of World War II, a new global conflict emerged, not fought with bullets and bombs, but waged in the shadows of espionage, the corridors of political power, and the minds of the public. The Cold War, a decades-long standoff between the United States and the Soviet Union defined the second half of the 20th century, splitting the world into two opposing ideological camps, capitalism versus communism. This period was marked by intense political rivalry, an unprecedented nuclear arms race, and proxy wars in Korea, Vietnam and Afghanistan, as each superpower sought to extend its influence without triggering a direct conflict that could lead to nuclear annihilation. The Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962 brought the world to the brink of such a catastrophe, highlighting the precarious nature of this global standoff. The Cold War also spurred competition in science and technology, most notably the space race, culminating in the United States Apollo 11 moon landing in 1969, a symbolic victory in demonstrating technological and ideological superiority. Despite the absence of direct military confrontation between the two superpowers, the Cold War's impact was global, influencing political, economic and social structures in countries around the world. It fueled revolutions, uprisings and the struggle for independence in colonized nations, leaving a legacy of conflict and division. The eventual decline of the Soviet Union and the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 signaled the end of the Cold War era 
ushering in a period of American unipolarity and the spread of neoliberal globalization. The dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991 closed the chapter on a conflict that had shaped international relations for nearly half a century. The Cold War era remains a pivotal period in understanding the complexities of global geopolitics, the dangers of ideological extremism, and the enduring quest for security and peace in an uncertain world. In the aftermath of World War II, a powerful wave of decolonization swept across the globe, marking the end of centuries of imperial rule and the birth of new nations. Spurred by the ideological clashes of the Cold War, the devastation wrought by global conflict and a growing international consensus against colonialism, peoples across Asia, Africa and the Middle East seized the moment to demand self-determination and independence. The process of decolonization was often fraught with struggle. In India, led by figures such as Mahatma Gandhi and Jawaharlal Nehru, a non-violent campaign against British rule culminated in independence in 1947, though it was accompanied by the painful partition of the subcontinent. In Algeria, a brutal war of independence from France lasted from 1954 to 1962, highlighting the often violent efforts to shed colonial control. By the 1960s and 1970s, the map of the world had been redrawn, as dozens of newly independent nations emerged. These countries faced the daunting tasks of nation-building, balancing the pressures of Cold War politics, addressing the legacies of colonial exploitation, and navigating the path to economic development and political stability. The end of colonial rule represented a monumental shift in global power dynamics, signaling the rise of the global south and challenging the dominance of Western powers. The decolonization era reshaped international relations, fostering a more multipolar world, but also left a legacy of border disputes, ethnic conflicts and economic challenges that continue to influence global affairs today. The late 20th and early 21st centuries have been defined by the advent and explosion of the information age, a period marked by the rapid development of digital technology and the internet, fundamentally altering the fabric of society and how we interact with the world. Born from military networks and academic research in the latter half of the 20th century, the internet evolved into a global platform for communication, commerce and information sharing. This era has seen the rise of the digital economy, where e-commerce and online services have transformed traditional business models, and social media platforms have redefined communication and social interaction. The information age has democratized access to information, broken down geographical barriers, and fostered global communities and movements. Technological advancements such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, and big data analytics are reshaping industries from healthcare and education to manufacturing and transportation. The blockchain and cryptocurrencies are challenging traditional financial systems, and the Internet of Things is connecting the physical and digital worlds in unprecedented ways. However, the information age also presents significant challenges. Cybersecurity threats and data breaches have raised concerns about privacy and the protection of personal information. The digital divide exacerbates inequalities as access to technology remains uneven across and within societies. The information age has ushered in a period of unparalleled innovation and connectivity, offering new opportunities for growth and development, while presenting complex challenges that require thoughtful navigation. As we continue to advance technologically, the decisions we make will shape the future of our digital world and its role in society. As we navigate the complexities of the 21st century, Humanity faces a convergence of challenges and opportunities unprecedented in our history. The environmental crisis, marked by climate change and biodiversity loss, poses an existential threat to our planet and way of life, urging immediate and concerted global action towards sustainability and conservation. Yet, amid these trials, the 21st century also offers immense opportunities for progress. Technological advancements continue to transform society, opening new frontiers in science, medicine and communication. The digital revolution has the potential to address some of our most pressing issues, from improving access to education and healthcare to fostering economic development and social cohesion. As we stand at this crossroads, the choices we make will shape the future of our planet and future generations. It is a time that calls for vision courage 
and collaboration as we work to address the challenges of the modern world while harnessing the opportunities of tomorrow. Like this video to support our journey through history, share it to spread the knowledge with others, and subscribe to our channel for more captivating tales from the annals of time. Together, let's keep the torch of learning burning bright, illuminating the path for generations to come. Remember, history is not just about where we've been, it's a guide to where we're going. Stay curious, stay inspired, and let's make history together.